Hi everyone, I am Avni and the title of my research is The Novel Applications of Elastin-like Polypeptides or ELP Nanoparticles in the Treatment of Pathogenic Free Living Amoeba. Um, I was mentored by Dr. Jordan Despani. So a bit of a background, I come from a developing nation and sites like these are pretty common on a countryside drive on a hot summer day. And this has always made me wonder, um, what kind of diseases are there in the middle of um, this unsanitary puddle? And this is when I came across um, the two indications that I chose to focus on in my research. The first is granulomatous amoebic encephalitis, or GAE, which is an opportunistic infection caused by three different pathogens, acanthamoeba, balamufia, and sapinia, and it has a staggering mortality rate of 97 to 98%. And this can be attributed to its nonspecific symptoms compared to other bacterial or amoebal infections. Um, there are several avenues of entry for these three pathogens in the human body. They include the nasal cavity, breaks in the skin, or the respiratory tract. Uh, my second indication is primary amoebic meningioencephalitis, or PAM, and unlike GAE, it's caused by one single pathogen, which is Nigleria phalari, and it has one avenue of entry into the human body, which is through the nasal cavity. Um, it enters the body in its trophozyte form, which is an active feeding state. Um, the trophozyte form contains food cups, which contributes to nerve and tissue destruction, as opposed to a cyst form, which the amoeba um, exhibits when the environmental conditions are unstable. Um, the body's innate immune response is insufficient, which is why, just like GAE, PAM also has a mortality rate of 97 to 98% for the same reasons, including nonspecific symptoms such as fevers, headaches, hallucinations um, that are similar to other bacterial and amoebal infections. So when we talk about diagnosing both of these indications, these, both of these indications are rare because there have been only 157 North American cases from 1962 to 2022. Um, and because of the nonspecific symptoms, both these indications are diagnosed postmortem through a cerebrospinal fluid analysis. And the first line of treatment are antifungals and antibacterials. Because of these rare indications, there are no specific drugs tailored to these indications. So the first line of treatment is amphotericin B, which according to the CDC has been used in all North American cases of PAM, um, and along with other antifungal medications such as azithromycin, rifampin, fluconazole, and miltiphacine. Um, and the reason that any of these antifungals are insufficient, uh, as represented by the high mortality rate, is because they require a high minimum inhibitory concentration. So an MIC is the lowest dose of a drug, which will inhibit the growth of a microorganism. And a high MIC is detrimental because it has dose-limiting side effects, such as renal toxicity, um, nausea, headaches, and chills in the case of amphotericin B. And be it the pathogen or the therapeutic agent uh, treating the pathogen, everything has to traverse the blood-brain barrier, which is a system of blood vessels and it essentially regulates the passage of substances between the bloodstream and the brain's extracellular fluid. Um, the primary issue with amphotericin B and other antifungals in treating PAM and GAE are their inability to effectively penetrate the blood-brain barrier. And because of their high MIC, they have dose-limiting side effects. So in order to circumvent this, um, I chose to focus on nanoparticles which range in size from one to 100 nanometers. And they've garnered attention because um, they, they treat and prevent various diseases such as different types of cancers. And I chose to leverage nanoparticles in the context of free living amoeba. Um, I specifically focused on elastin-like polypeptide nanoparticles. So elastin is a protein found in um, connective tissue and elastin-like polypeptide nanoparticles mimic natural elastin, and they can be leveraged in the treatment of free-living amoeba through their active targeting um, 
multifunctional approaches and even passive targeting. So um, I provided a description on how ELP nanoparticles could be tailored to these two specific conditions. For example, Nigleria phalari, the pathogen causing primary amoebic meningoencephalitis, contains the GPCR receptor and several techniques such as molecular docking and uh, bioinformatics, and as well as QSR analyses can be used to find specific ligands and surface modifications that could be made to ELP nanoparticles, which are very different from any other type of nanoparticles such as metronidazole because of their transition temperature and their ability to form coacervates at the transition temperatures around the therapeutic agents. Um, and that is it, thank you. Thank you, Avni, for that presentation. Um, we do have a question. Um, one question someone asks is, have people used ELPs to deliver antibiotics or medications to the brain? Um, so elastin, spe specifically for um, free-living amoeba or other antibiotics are not commonly used. So ELP nanoparticles are fairly new um, in the context of free-living amoeba and other uh, other treatments for the brain. And um, as you said. Great. Um, someone else asks, uh, what was the hardest part of your research? So the hardest part, since this was my first research project, it was on, honestly comprehensing, uh, having a good comprehension of the literature. Um, it, that included understanding the physiology um, and the pharmacology of the drugs, their mechanisms of action, and going back and forth and understanding the terminology and uh, creating approaches like for the ELP with um, QSAR analyses. Right. And then a question that I like to ask all the scholars is, what do you think comes next for your research? I think ELPs are really promising in the context of free living amoeba, um, even though they are a rare disease, um, a lot of it goes undiagnosed because the progression is within five days and it usually occurs in underdeveloped countries. So if we can continue to leverage ELP nanoparticles and explore um, different ligands and surface receptors and explore our molecular docking and QSAR analyses, uh, we can really make a difference in treating free living amoeba. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Avni, for that presentation. Um, I'm really proud of the work that you've accomplished here today.